ladies and gentlemen. Please welcome your host of the Racing for the Climate broadcast show, Nikki Shields. Well, hello and a very warm welcome to Racing for the Climate and the third round of the RCCO World EX Championship, where we get to combine motorsport with entertainment and sustainability, whilst also supporting the fight against climate change. What an incredible combination. And thank you so much for joining us. Now, today we really are in a virtual world. As normal, we've got drivers all around the world competing today, but also I am joining remotely. Of course, normally I'd be in a studio but this weekend I was in Valencia for the Formula E racing and of course now that I am home I've got to follow all the Covid protocols which means I am isolating at home. The question is can you guess what room I'm in? Let me know on social media. Um, now, today we're going to be racing in Sepang in Malaysia. Love this track. But before we get into it, let's take a look at the series so far and those first two rounds from Silverstone and Sebring because they did not disappoint. Lasse Sorensen from Denmark was the star of the first two rounds of the new RCCO World EX Championship. The real-world pro racing driver was able to defeat esports racer Jurnec Simoncic in a tight super-final at Silverstone. Sorensen had a better start and was able to keep Simoncic behind for the rest of the lap. Things were a little bit more complicated at Sebring, where the TK9 e-speed driver produced a jump start in his qualifying race. This meant he had to go through the last chance race. Starting from the back of the grid, Sorensen kept calm, gained the necessary positions and finally made it into the super final yet again. This time, Sorensen stayed close to pole sitter Alan Terzic from BS Plus competition and attacked him in the last corner. A slight touch at the rear was enough to unsettle Terzic a little bit and for Sorensen to take his second victory in a row. There was no further action from race control following the last corner contact. This means Sorensen remains undefeated in World EX and is the man to beat today at Sepang. Lasse Sorensen, unbelievable, back-to-back -back wins. So, of course, he is going to be looking for his third consecutive title today. But it's not going to be easy. Oh, no, there are plenty of drivers today who are looking to get the better of him. Of course, in that extremely quick and incredible EX0 championship race car. The EX0 is the world's fastest virtual electric racing car, created by Le Mans winner and DTM champion Mike Rockefeller, with the help of technical partners from the real racing world. In theory, the car could become reality. Right now, the virtual version is exclusively available for the R Factor 2 racing simulation. EX stands for Experimental Electric Prototype, zero for zero emissions. With 1,000 HP and 1,000 kilograms, the EX0 has a power to weight ratio of 1 to 1, allowing lap times close to those of the latest LMP1 hybrids. The car accelerates from 0 to 200 kilometers per hour in just 4.6 seconds and is able to reach a top speed of approximately 384 kilometers per hour. It has two forward gears and four wheel drive with two electric engines, one at the front one at the rear axle. The 85 kilowatt battery allows for about 15 minutes of racing. Together with partners like Formula E and DTM champions Abt Sportsline, RCCO will keep the EX0 in line with the development of zero emission drivetrains in the real world. In future also allowing car brands to develop their own cars for the platform. And all this with a clear purpose creating awareness for the climate crisis and collecting donations. Each lap completed in the RCCO World EX Championship increases the hashtag Racing for the Climate jackpot, which will be devoted to a climate conservation project selected by the world champion at the end of the season. World EX has partnered with crowdfunding specialists Fundraiser from Canada to collect as many donations as possible, offering fans special incentives they cannot buy. 
Absolutely love that car. I mean, naught to 100 kilometres an hour in 4.6 seconds. Unbelievable. And also some brilliant incentives, of course, for fans and around the fundraising, which is so critical and important in the course of this championship. Now, speaking of incentives, it is time. I love this time. It's my favourite time because it is a gadget of the month. Now, this is when you have the chance, you've got the opportunity to win a really special item of sporting memorabilia. So let's find out what the gadget of the month is. Abt Sports Line, technology partner of the RCCO World EX Championship, is in 2021 celebrating 125 years. The company was founded in April 1896 as a blacksmith of yore and has since developed into Abt Sports Line, the world's largest automotive aftermarket and performance parts specialist for Audi and Volkswagen. It is also one of the most successful international motorsport teams. In 2021, Abt Sports Line is competing in Formula E, Extreme E and DTM, with World EX co-founder and CEO Mike Rockefeller being one of the team's three DTM drivers. Abt is a pioneer in electric mobility and always looking into new technologies. For its 125th anniversary, Abt Sports Line has created a limited edition book with a total of 400 pages about the history of the company. One of these unique books, which are not for sale, is today's Gadget of the Month, signed by the Abt Sports Line CEO, Hans Jürgen Abt. Wow, that really will be an absolutely fascinating read. Abt have an incredible history in motorsport, 125 years. And Hans Jürgen Abt, of course, joined Formula E at the very beginning. And his son, Daniel Abt, was racing in the championship for six seasons. So if you do want to be in with the chance of winning that prize, then do stay tuned because there'll be more details on that later. And it's super exciting as well, because of course in the studio, we have the amazing Abt Audi R8 LMS GT3. What an awesome car to have on show today. Uh, plus, in the meantime, get involved in the conversation online. Use the hashtag Racing for the Climate. Uh, tell us what you think. Tell us who your favourite driver is. Um, but just, just use that hashtag Racing for the Climate. Right. Now it is time to find out all the latest news in the world of World EX. The Malaysian EX Prix is the home event for Asian World EX team Absolute Racing, but also for its strategic partner InSpeed Racing, which will take part in today's event as a guest entry with young Chinese drivers Xiao Fei Li and Liu Yi. Founded in 2019 as one of the first well-established Chinese motorsport esports teams, InSpeed Racing and Absolute Racing have recently formed a strategic partnership to help bridge the gap from motorsport esports and motorsport in real life. WRT has two new programs in 2021, World EX and LMP. The Belgian team has made history recently in the real racing world by winning their very first LMP race. In the opening round of the European Le Mans series at Barcelona, the WRT Orica, driven by Louis Delatras, Robert Kubica, and World EX competitor Yi Fai Yi, was among the front runners straight away and performed a faultless race, taking home the victory. The EX Zero will be part of the new Esports Racing World Cup created by World EX Partners VCO. For the first time, esports racing organizations from all around the world will have to tackle races on different simulation platforms. iRacing, R Factor 2, and Assetto Corsa Competizioni. VCO has chosen the EX Zero for the races on R Factor 2. The RCCO Esports Series has become the first virtual racing series to be officially acknowledged as a feeder and qualifying series for the World EX Championship. In round four, Andre Dietzel and Paul Wingens claimed victories on the Berlin Formula E track. The two spectacular city street races gave a foretaste of the upcoming EX Prix on the streets of Maastricht in May. Well, now, very excitingly, it's time to catch up with our team of the month and their team director from Absolute Racing, Ingo Mata. And also, we've got the World EX co-founder here with us, Mike Rockefeller. Ingo, Mike, welcome to you both. Um, Ingo, just tell me where you are, because it sounds like you've got a rather noisy background. <laughs> are they real racing cars yeah, we can hear? Sorry. sorry for that, but I'm in Spa. We just have the second day of the prologue because we are going to... Uh... 
obviously we are preparing for Le Mans, so the prologue is good. We do Spa and then we do Monza before that. So sorry for the never, noise, but yeah, never apologize. They are never apologize for being in Spa. <laughs> um, just quickly tell us though about why it's so important for you um, and for Absolute Racing, you know, the Chinese team to be involved in esports and World EX. When we were approached for the World X, for us it makes totally sense because it's something completely new. I like the system that yeah. it's not the complete copy, carbon copy of real motorsport. It's something new and uh, we love to be part of it. Well, it's fantastic to have you part of it. Mike, what's your opinion? It must be exciting for you to have, you know, one of China's leading teams involved in this competition. Absolutely. Um, I think we are really thrilled, you know, to have them on board. And uh, really, they were one of the first to join. Um, Thomas and Ingo know each other. Obviously, I know Ingo and... Uh, yeah, they are they are great racers, and as we are world championship and building up an international championship, it's very important for us to have a, a top team from Asia, and uh, that's why we yeah we went for absolute racing, and uh, it's it's great to have them, and I, I I'm just uh, very excited about it. Um, Inga, I've got to ask you because you're obviously an expert when it comes to electrification in the world of China. How big are electric cars at the moment? It's, it's moving rapidly. I think China is one of the biggest markets for sure worldwide for electric mobility. And it's developed a lot. In the beginning, it was just uh, big fleets. But now we are actually going down to a lot of private people, which are starting from the mid-class to do also electrifying cars. And it's growing a lot. I mean, you just have to look at the auto show, which was old or is still on in Shanghai. And it's also all under the electrification. Well, massive thank you, Ingo, for joining us. And good luck for the racing at this weekend in Spa. And of course, Mike, it's always a pleasure to see you on the show. Uh, we will, of course, be hearing more about Absolute Racing, our team of the month, a little bit later on the show. Now, our host country, uh, we always talk about the climate facts and figures um, when it comes to climate change and, of course, the measures that they're putting into place to combat global warming. So here are the World EX Zero Facts about Malaysia. Our host country is home to beautiful beaches, a 30 million year old rainforest and the mega city of Kuala Lumpur. Malaysia is separated by the South China Sea into two regions. West Malaysia, which occupies the southern half of the Malay Peninsula, and East Malaysia, which is part of the island of Borneo. Approximately 32 million people live in Malaysia. 1.8 million live in the capital alone, Kuala Lumpur. Malaysia has the sixth largest economy in Southeast Asia. Although palm oil production is a problem, the country has goals which include increasing renewable energy share to 20% by 2025 by spending $2.9 billion on new grids, LED streetlights and rooftop solar panels. The country is targeting a 35% cut in emissions by 2030 compared to 2005 levels and a quadrupling of solar energy capacity by 2030. Malaysia is building three artificial islands off the coast of Penang, centred around sustainability and biodiversity. These will be powered by renewable energy, with autonomous public transport networks and buildings constructed from bamboo, Malaysian timber and recycled materials. Malaysia's capital, Kuala Lumpur, is accepting proposals from startups and innovative companies to solve future mobility issues, such as the Curb Global Parking App, Lyft Tango's on-demand shared transport initiative, and Geospox database, which offers unique data insights to enable smart cities. Right, now it's time to take a detailed look at the amazing track we're racing on today, the Sepang International Circuit with Mike Rockenfeller. Here's an insight into what challenges the drivers face. Tonight we are in Malaysia on the Sepang International Circuit. Um, it's the third round of the World EX and I'm really looking forward to great racing. I believe it's one of the toughest tracks in our calendar and why, I try to explain you right now. We are on start finish in Sepang. Uh, very fast here, almost 330 kph. Heartbreaking for corner one. It's a very tight corner, very long corner followed by a very tight left-hander and then it's important to have a good exit here this one is flat out long right-hander you can feel the cars on the edge up the hill again heartbreaking tight right-hander good exit here is important with the four-wheel drive 
it's uh, amazing still every time I drive the car how much power it has. Now quick left hander, quick right hander, nice combination there, a bit on the curb. And now a double right hander, which is actually one corner uh, in the car, it feels like at least. And now this is the tightest place, the left hander here. You can see some wheel spin, even with four wheel drive, 1000 horsepower, it's pulling. And now we are, I think we did already half a lap. Quick left hander here again, long right hander. This one is very easy to make a mistake because tires are cooking already by then. That's also the most difficult part here in Sepang, to keep your tires alive. And now we are on the back straight, approaching the last corner. I think here we will have some good overtakings because it's a very wide corner, many lines are possible. And then of course, a nice exit here. Go back on start finish and that was a lap in Sepang. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you enjoy the show. We loved it, Mike. Thank you. Now, World EX, of course, has a very unique format. So let's find out more with Dave Richardson to take us through the levels of today's racing. World EX has a unique format with a the winner takes it all approach and pro racing drivers from the real racing world competing with some of the planet's fastest esports racers. Ten events are scheduled for season one. Ten permanent teams are racing for the climate and the world championship titles. Each team has two drivers, one pro from the real racing world and one esports racer. Every EX Pre has six levels and a total of 17 short rallycross inspired races. Level one is the qualifying. The 20 drivers of the 10 teams go head to head in 10 races over just one lap. The level one pairings are decided by one of the 10 teams while a fan vote on Twitter defines which of the drivers will start from pole. So head to Twitter next time to vote for your favorite driver. The 10 winners of the qualifying races proceed directly to level 3, the quarterfinals. Level 2 is the last chance for all those drivers that were defeated in level 1. They are challenged by two ambitious wildcard drivers who will have the advantage of starting from the front row of the grid. Will they be able to make the cut? The top three pro racing drivers and the top three esports racers from the last chance race will proceed to level 3, the quarterfinals. The pro racing drivers are competing in quarterfinal one. The esports racers in quarterfinal two. The top six drivers of each quarterfinal move up to level four, so don't be last or second last. Level four, it's getting tougher. Only the top three drivers of each semi-final will proceed to level five, the final. Now, it's time to mix the fastest pro racing drivers with the fastest esports racers. The pros will start from the inside, the eSports racers from the outside. The winner will secure the pole for level 6, the Super Final. He or she will be joined by the best placed driver from the other group, so watch out for a race within the race. The Super Final is a one lap head to head battle which decides the overall winner of the EX Pre. All event winners qualify for the final shootout, which will decide the driver's world champion on the famous Nürburgring Nordschleife. Who will get the ticket for the green hell today? Well, there we go. Now that we know all there is to know about World EX, it is time for qualifying. This is level one, the qualifying. Weather conditions here at the Sabang Circuit in Malaysia. Well, partly cloudy, but the temperature is where you would expect it to be here in Malaysia. 31 degrees with just a seven kilometer per hour wind. Andreas Jokimsen, how are you feeling about this race? Yeah, it's gonna be tough, I think. Uh, I know Risto is pretty fast, so uh, yeah, let's see how it goes. Risto Capet, Andreas has just said this is going to be a tough race because uh, I think he's worried about you. What are your thoughts? I feel good. I think the inside starting line will be important. So if I can take uh, use of that and stay in front, then uh, yeah, hopefully we have a clean, clean race and keep moving forward with a, with a good lap time. Inside line is important, as you can see. A brilliant start from uh, Risto Capet, then driving for RAG Esports. 
into the first right-hander, which is one of ten right-handers on this 15-turn circuit. And Andreas Jochumsen then pushing hard, almost literally, into the back of the Aristo Capit car then as they make their way around this 5.543 kilometres. Very undulating as well, and they're just an example of some of the elevation changes you find here in Sepang. Risto Capit certainly showing a clean pair of heels to Andreas Jochumsen at the moment. Great shots that we can see of these uh, drivers hard at work. We were on board there with Andreas Jochumsen. Still trying to uh, get closer to Risto Capit. Andreas Jochumsen, of course, a Daytona 24-hour sim race winner. And to give Risto Capit his due as well, he won the Sim Formula Europe in 2020. And at the moment, they are P1 and P2. Risto Capit then maintaining a good margin between himself and Andreas Jochumsen. Four or five car lengths as they both battle with these extraordinarily powerful EX0 cars around the uh, Sepang circuit, reaching the closing stages of the lap now. And Risto, to be fair to him, has maintained a margin, a comfort margin, if you like, between himself and Andreas Jochumsen of four or five car lengths, virtually from turn one, that first right-hander. We're in the right-hander now, which is uh, turn number 14. Heading up behind the uh, start finish straight now, this long straight that leads us into uh, turn number 15, which is not quite a hairpin, but it is quite tight, and that's where Risto and Andreas are approaching now. Risto Capit, barring uh, some technical disaster, you've nailed it, my All friend. Right. A clean one. P1, Risto Capit, P2, Andreas Jochumsen. Good race. Yeah, good race, man. Gabby Chavez, just a quick word ahead of this race, racing for Patrick Long Esports. How are you feeling? Pretty good. I'm um, enjoying this track a lot, so uh, ready to have a good time. So off the line they go, Gabby Chavez, and uh, welcome to uh, Simon Pilate, who's raced in the Euro NASCAR 2 Championship, taking some three podiums and into turn number one here in Sepang then as the cars not quite side by side. They both take different lines around this sequence of turns. You're running downhill here in Sepang where either driver could take advantage, let alone take the grass as well. Well done to Simon Pilate for holding on to the car, although it's given a huge advantage to Gabby Chavez, who is of, uh, up the road now to the tune of four or five car lengths. But Simon Pilate is chasing down Gabby Chavez. You can see the concentration there. Simon Pilate also concentrating as we put both drivers on screen. And reaching the conclusion of the lap, we have just one more turn to do. That is the uh, left-hander of turn number 15. Uh, then Gabby can head towards the timing line and seal the P1 position in this Q race. And as they dash for the line, then it is uh, Gabby Chavez that takes it from Simon Pilate. Lasse Sorensen, quick word before the race. You've obviously had two back-to-back -back wins. Can you make it a third today? <laughs> well, hopefully, yeah. Um... It's, it's a hard track for me, I, I have to be honest with that. The long corners, it doesn't really fit my driving style, but we'll do the best we can and uh, hopefully it will work out. And Dries, there's a target on Lasse's back. <laughs> can you beat him? <laughs> yeah, well, of course, we'll I mean, it will not be easy considering he won the last two rounds, but uh, of course, it's a goal which we would have to try to beat uh, Lasse. Stop his scoring streak. <laughs> <laughs> Very interesting psychological battles going on then between uh, Dries Van Tor and Lasse Sorensen. Lasse saying, oh, this track really doesn't suit me. Well, Dries Van Tor has certainly got his car into P1 for the WRT team now as Lasse Sorensen tries to attack, going through turn number one into turn two, three, and running downhill, Dries Van Tor from Lasse Sorensen. Both pro drivers, both driving for teams with extraordinary pedigree. WRT team from Belgium and, of course, the TK9 e-speed team headed up by uh, one Mr. Tom Christensen. So lots of pride at stake here. And at the moment, Dries Van Tor has got the advantage. Only a couple of car lengths between Van Tor and Sorensen. They're fairly evenly matched. But around this long, sweeping 5.543 kilometer circuit, Lasse Sorensen's going to be right on the back of Dries Van Tor and try and find a way by, and that is not going to be easy. On board with Dries Van Tor, what a fantastic shot this is, looking back at Lasse Sorensen. Oh, sideways. That's a proper injury right there. <laughs> <laughs> well done for holding on to it, Lasse. I thought it would get better, but 
didn't really. <laughs> I would look good from behind, so. <laughs> that also counts. Well, it's looking good from this angle as well. Both of you doing a good job here. And I tell you what, Drees, you've not got this all nailed yet because Lasse is coming, calling. Lasse wants to take this from Drees Vantor. It's now or never. Oh, he holds onto the car, gets a bit of a tank slapper on. But look at this. Down the outside of Drees Vantor, here comes Lasse Sorensen. All the way around turn 15 is a long way around. On the exit, he will try and get underneath Drees Vantor, but I don't think he's close enough to be able to do it as they run to the line then side by side. Vantor oh, wins. <laughs> almost completely lost it. <laughs> Martin Stefanko, just a quick word before the race. You know, starting with cold tyres, cold brakes, is that going to be an issue? Well, I practiced the start, so hopefully not, but you never know. And Fabrice Cornelius, how are you feeling? Is this uh, an exciting part of your championship fight? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm competing against a very good sim racer, so let's see uh, what I can do against him. <laughs> So Fabrice Cornelis on the inside, Martin Stefanko on the outside. You can make the outside line work here because turn number two appears very quickly after turn number one. And the outside of turn one gives you the inside of turn two. And that's exactly what Martin Stefanko is trying to do. But Fabrice Cornelis had got enough momentum to see him off. So Martin Stefanko, uh, a great effort around those two turns, but it is... Uh, P2 as Fabrice Cornelis leads, but look at the speed that Martin Stefanko has got. Will he try a dive to the inside? Yes, he does. There's almost a touch between the two of them. Good, healthy respect from these two racers, though. Uh, doing a very, very good job here as Martin Stefanko again going for the outside line. And uh, Fabrice Cornelis, wherever Martin Stefanko wants to put the car, Fabrice Cornelis is making sure that he uh, occupies as much of the tarmac as is legal uh, to prevent uh, Stefanko from coming through. Fabrice Cornelis leading from Martin Stefanko. But that could change at any moment. Here comes Stefanko once again. Look at the concentration from Fabrice Cornelis, who runs a bit wide. That allows Stefanko to get alongside a little touch once again between the two of them. And on board with the number 98 driver, Martin Stefanko, which is the best place for us to watch this action. It's fantastic racing between the two of them. This EX Prix of Malaysia, where it's certainly living up to the expectations and uh, delivering us some great racing to enjoy between these two fine esports racers, Fabrice Cornelis and Martin Stefanko. Now we go on board for this fight to turn number 15. Whoa! And a bit of squeezing going on there. It's a. Uh, Cornelis on the inside, Stefanko on the outside, the run to the line, the drag race to the chequered flag. Who is going to win this? By the closest of finishes, Fabrice Cornelis. Bruno Senna, is this a track that you know well? <laughs> I know this track well. Uh, a bit different on the game uh, than in real life, but uh, yeah, I'm ready. It's going to be fun. Um, I think uh, hopefully I can do a better job than the, last, uh, the, the first two races where I made mistakes on my own. So. Let's just not make mistakes, Mickey, and you know maybe I can actually go through once uh, without having to go through the uh, <laughs> kickback. Bruno, it is with some pleasure that I recall you being here in GP2 Asia, but uh, you didn't get as good a start here as uh, Hong Li Yi, who carries a lot of speed into turn number one, but locks oh, up. No. Oh man. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. So now I can <laughs> you know, just kind of drive pretty chilled. Well, Bruno, I have to say, at least you're polite about it and you have said thank you, but boy, does that give you a huge advantage then as Hong Lee now will try and chase you down. Uh, well, apologies for Hong Lee's um, expressions there as he lost control of his uh, EX0 and almost kept it out of the barriers. In the meantime, at long last, dare I say it, Bruno Senna you win. I won one race. It's a miracle. Ah. Alan Terzik, I've got to ask, you're second in the championship. Is Liam Deval going to get in the way? Well, my plan is no, but we'll <laughs> see. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. Liam, are you going to get in Alan's way? My plan is yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> I hope so, but it's it's... You know, one lap, so really anything can happen. I, th I think people said the advantage on the inside for the start is huge, so I'll experience it. Uh, let's see. 
Well, away from the line, Alan Terzic certainly does make the inside line pay as they head down towards turn number one. He leads Liam Duvall, but Liam has got second win now coming into the turn. And if he can try and nip underneath Alan Terzic now as he takes a wide line, this could be Liam Duvall, but he just loses the back end. And Alan Terzic uh, can fight another few metres now in P1. So it is Alan Terzic from Liam Duvall. 5.543 kilometres, the uh, circuit. It's a nice long track length and very undulating as well. So there is going to be still opportunity for Liam Duvall to find his way past Alan Terzic. However, Alan, of course, is going to make the car as wide as possible and try and prevent Liam from coming through. But you know how ambitious Liam Duvall is. He's already proved that through the first sequence of turns. And Alan Terzic, for the moment, has got a couple of car lengths on Liam Duvall. But here he comes, fighting once again to try and wrestle that position of P1 oh, away. <laughs> Yeah, me too. But that is the trouble when you push so hard, you stand a chance of losing the car. Really got some understeer there. You could see that. These EX Zeros are truly remarkable racing machines. And Alan Terzic has got his setup as good as he possibly can in this Q race, which he leads from Liam Duvall. These two eSports racers then head to head in this qualifying battle. It's BS Plus competition taking on Patrick Long eSports. And for the moment, it's the BS Plus eSports that have got the uh, P1 place with Alan Tursic. Heading into the final turn now. Where's Liam Duvall going to point the car? Is he going to dive to the inside of Alan Tursic? Well, Alan Tursic makes sure he cannot do that by closing the gap as they head to the line. Alan Tursic wins. Liam Duvall, though, you tried jolly uh, hard. I thought I had a look inside, but I can't break this car. <laughs> Patrick Niederhauser, your team is, I think, eighth in the championship at the moment. So is today the day you can score valuable points? I'll try it, you. Um, obviously, uh, I'm new to the series, my first race now uh, today, but uh, surely I will give my best, see what comes out. Uh, Patrick Niederhauser driving for the uh, Nianco eSports team, Nico and Co, of course, and Philippe Deans driving for BS Plus competition as they head in towards uh, turn number one. And uh, Niederhauser with the lead. A little bit of a touch there between Niederhauser and Philipp Deans. And uh, Philipp Deans trying to get to the outside of Patrick Niederhauser. But Patrick Niederhauser holding on to that P1 spot. As here comes Philipp Deans once again. He's trying very hard and he's got real momentum now along this straight as they climb uphill. And uh, Patrick Niederhauser positioning the car absolutely perfectly, denying Philip Deans, but now Deans almost right alongside him, side by side in this level one qualifying race between Philippe Deans and Patrick Niederhauser. And uh, it is Niederhauser that still holds on to that P1 spot, but uh, fair credit to Philippe Deans. He's putting that car wherever he can to try and get past. He oh, carries a little bit too much speed into that turn, almost losing the front end of the car, but holding on to it nicely. He is definitely putting uh, Niederhauser under pressure here, and Niederhauser loses, loses the back end of the car, and that was exactly what Philippe Deans was trying to do, really put the pressure on Patrick Niederhauser. So Niederhauser now is P2. The leader is uh, Philippe Deans. He maintained that pressure all the way around the track, and eventually the pressure paid off, and Patrick Niederhauser made a very, very rare error, and uh, therefore is now relegated to P2 as uh, Philippe Deans leads. So the Nianco eSports driver in that second place as they run along the uh, back straight now, heading in towards the uh, final turn, turn number 15 here in uh, Sepang. Philippe Deans as Patrick Niederhauser will try and carry enough speed into the uh, final turn to try and have a go, but I think Philippe Deans has done enough to seal the victory. Indeed he has. P1 to Philippe Deans. Here comes Zyfi Lee for InSpeed versus Thomas Schmidt for Nianko as they head in towards turn number one. Then a great start from uh, Zyfi Lee into turn one. Oh, oh, oh. thank you. Oh, <laughs> oh no. I made the me gravel. Same mistake. Oh, gosh. Oh, Zyfi, that really did play into the hands nicely of Thomas Schmidt, who now leads this as Zyfi Lee finds his way into the gravel. And Thomas Schmidt tries to hold on to this car. This is Thomas Schmidt, hard at work then for Nianco Esports. Though he's not having to work terribly hard because he's got so much margin over Zyfi Lee. Uh, although it's not over until they cross the timing line and uh, you can see Lee in the background along the back straight here is getting closer to Thomas Schmidt, but I really rather fear that Schmidt has got this all sewn up now with one turn to do. 
And uh, around the uh, final left-hander he goes with Zyfai Lee closing at all times, but it is going to be victory for Thomas Schmidt. Congrats. Yeah, thank you. Sorry for you. <laughs> for no, actually, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be back here and see Pang. I, I only came here twice in real life for the 12-hour race, so um, it's, uh, it's nice to be back. Welcome back, Frank Bieler. He is up against some formidable competition, though, with Yi for Yi for absolute racing. As they head in towards a turn number one, then it is Yi for Yi then that holds the uh, P1 spot for the moment. But Frank Bieler will do everything he can to try and find his way past Yi for Yi. So Frank Bieler, who we travel on board with now around the Sepang circuit, trying to find uh, the perfect opportunity to get alongside Yi for Yi and uh, potentially overtake. He's carrying a lot of speed now into the next turn. I'm so confident on the brakes with this car, I tell you. Well, both these drivers, both Frank Bielup and Yi for Yi, hugely, hugely successful drivers. Uh, Yi for Yi, of course, uh, Asian Le Mans Series LMP2 champion, and uh, Frank Bieler, well, to reel off all the uh, championships that Frank has won in his uh, illustrious career, I don't quite have enough time in this race. Uh, but for the moment, Yi for Yi is showing him a clean pair of heels. So, Frank, you've got work oh, to do. Oh, my game frozen. I lost my game. So, unfortunately, it's a retirement for Yi for Yi. Unfortunately, his race went down during the course of the qualifying lap. Uh, so unfortunately, his race result will not count, which means, uh, Frank Baylor, you have won that race. <laughs> um, and you're going to go yeah, to the last Yeah, I mean, year. lucky, uh, very, very lucky. But uh, I mean, that's how it is. Uh, sometimes you can have some technical issues, like in real life. Very sorry for, for him. But um, yeah, he has a second chance. So uh, let's see how he can do there. Mitchy, let's have a quick word with you. Obviously, your teammate, Yifaye, has not set a time for qualifying, so the pressure's really on you to deliver for Absolute Racing. Yeah, absolutely. So let's just make up for Yifi as good as I can. Hopefully win the battle and, uh, yeah, make it straight to level three. Fighting talk there. Luca, how are you feeling? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm really happy. So uh, I am hope uh, I have now a good chance for level three or furthermore. So, yeah, let's not crash. Here comes Mickey Hoyer and Luca Keita then. Good start from Mickey Hoyer from the inside line going in towards uh, turn number one. But Luca Keita is right with him. So into turn number one they go now. Little bit of a lock up from Luca Keita as they run downhill. And the car tries to get away from you, but it positions itself perfectly into turn number two. Mickey Hoyer uh, being really pressured from Luca Keita, but now he's trying to stretch his legs a little bit. But uh, the uh, number 11 car is not letting him do that as they go side by side. Brilliant driving from Luca Keita as he tries to get to the outside. Now he'll try and get underneath Mickey Hoyer as they head up towards the uh, next turn. This is great driving in the uh, World EX Championship. We're racing for the climate here in Sepang. Yes, Malaysia is the host for round three of this World EX Championship. And Mickey Hoyer in our final qualifying race is leading Luca Keita, but the moment, ah, oh, Luca Keita just loses a bit of momentum and runs into the gravel. That will have cost him a couple of tenths. It's a joy to watch these two fighting, two supremely talented esports racers. And you can see in our split shot to the right-hand side of your screen just how concentrated both these guys are in their racing. And it's a joy to watch Mickey Hoyer position the car absolutely perfectly. It's a joy to watch Luca Keita trying to chase him down. And the lap isn't done yet, therefore the race is not finished. Keita will try and find a way, but he is running out of time as we reach the uh, final stages of uh, this uh, qualifying race. Level one, it's Mickey Hoyer from Luca Keita as they head in towards turn number 15. Luca Keita carries a lot of speed into the final turn. However, Mickey Hoyer has got it all completely under control and as they head towards the timing line and uh, taking the victory, it is uh, Mickey Hoyer for absolute racing. Nice lip. Thank you, thank you. Picking out one or two of the notables from our summary of uh, qualifying for the eSports drivers, Risto Cap at P1, also P1s for Cornelis, for Terzic, for Schmidt, and also for Mickey Hoyer for absolute racing. And for the pro drivers, Gabby Chavez, Dries Vantor, Bruno Senna, Philippe Deans, and Frank Bieler.
Well, there you have it. Our first quarter finalists have secured their places on the grid, but it's not over yet for the other drivers because there's still a chance in the last chance race. Now, they're also going to be joined by two new drivers, this week's wild card entries. Let's find out who they are. Today's two wildcard drivers in the Malaysian EX Prix are local hero Alex Jung and Mikhail Nemas from Germany. Jung is one of the most successful Asian racing drivers and the only Malaysian having competed in Formula One. Most recently, the 44-year-old won the Audi R8 LMS Cup for three consecutive times. In 2008, Alex Jung founded Axel Sports, which includes an eSports racing team and own virtual racing series like eRacing GP. He is also a TV commentator for Fox Sports Asia. Mikhail Nemas is one of the world's leading model car builders and no stranger to the world of RCCO. The 38-year-old is one of the most successful drivers of the RCCO slot car series. In 2020, Nemas became the first champion of the new RCCO eSports series. And he also raced in the RCCO hashtag Race Home Charity Racing Series, becoming known as the hashtag Windshadow Man. I was in the complete wind shadow. The wind shadow. <laughs> famous <laughs> race home wind shadow. Nate, <laughs> watch out! Uh -huh. I'm in your wind shadow! With NR Esports, Nemas has launched his very own esports racing team, which is mainly competing on iRacing. Level 2 The Last Chance. And let's go through the grid, the biggest grid. Row one, Alex Jung and Mikael Nemes, they are side by side. On row two, it's Lasse Sorensen and he has Luca Kita for company. To row three of the grid, Patrick Niederhauser and Liam Duvall side by side. On row four, Simon Palate and Andreas Jochemsen. To row five of the grid now, it's Hong Li Yi and Martin Stefanko. And on the sixth row of the grid, Yi Fa Yi and Zai Fai Li. What a grid of competitors. And that's what the cars look like on the grid, just awaiting the start signal. So as everyone jostles for positions right at the very start, heading downhill in towards turn number one. On board with uh, Simon Palate, who gets hit from behind, and Simon Palate makes contact with Lasse Sorensen and is turned around and now finds himself right at the back of the pack. And Lasse Sorensen, whoa! He gets touched by uh, Alex Jung, but Lasse Sorensen manages to hold on to it. He drifts his way around and finds himself in the lead of this race. Patrick Niederhauser taking advantage and momentarily got up ahead of uh, Alex Jung. And Jung is not finished with Lasse Sorensen. There was second contact there. So uh, Lasse Sorensen doing his level best to escape from Alex Jung at the moment. So the order now is Sorensen, Jung, Keita, Liam Duvall, then it's Hong Li Yi and Patrick Niederhauser back to P6 now. On board with Alex Jung, who's just been overtaken by Luca Keita. So Luca Keita picks up that P2 position, relegates Alex Jung to P3, and he's under pressure from Liam Duvall for that P3 place as well. So Sorensen escaping up the road, uh, being chased now by Luca Keita. Then it is uh, Liam Duvall who does get past, and uh, so does uh, Hong Li Yi. Uh, Duvall and Hong Li Yi having a real ding-dong battle, but this is the man that's leading the way, Lasse Sorensen. Bear in mind, this is only the opening lap of a three-lap last chance race, level two. Luca Keita in P2, trying to uh, get on terms with Lasse Sorensen. Then Alex Jung with a whole train of cars behind him, including Liam Duvall and Patrick Niederhauser, and uh, Hong Li Yi and Andreas Jochemsen, as well as uh, Mikael Nemas also. Whoa, what a big slide around that turn. Oh, sorry. Uh, well, that was fortuitous, fortuitous for us, because we were on board with Patrick Niederhauser, the Nianco Esports driver, as he gets turned around and finds the grass and the barriers and now gets the car once again pointing in the right direction. But unfortunately, his position in this level two last chance race is now plum last. Lasse Sorensen and uh, Luca Gita then, who are breaking away really from the rest of the pack. Lasse Sorensen got a few car lengths over. Uh, Luca Kita currently the uh, TK9 E Speed driver who is leading this last chance race. So it is Sorensen from Kita for Duvall. Then it's Alex Jung and Andreas Jochemsen ahead of Hong Li Yi and uh, Mikael Nemas. 
Mikhail Limas in uh, that P6 place, but Martin Stefanko uh, making good moves as well as Martin Stefanko moves up to uh, P7 now. So Lasse Sorensen and Luca Kita Kita is getting closer to Lasse Sorensen now. So this is the fight for P1. But between these two, the TK9 E-Speed driver Lasse Sorensen with Luca Kita getting ever closer now. Luca Kita driving for the Bieler Racing Team Euronics, reeling in Lasse Sorensen. Although I begin to wonder whether Lasse Sorensen is actually just managing that gap between himself and Luca Kita and lulling Luca Kita almost into a false sense of security and then uh, just finding the pace he needs to uh, increase the margin once again. Uh, so here, top two then. Uh, you can see Liam Duvall just rounding that uh, turn 14. Uh, he's not out of this yet, that's for sure. And on board with uh, Luca Kita now as Lasse Sorensen runs quite wide. That allows Luca Kita to get a little bit closer, but Lasse Sorensen's exit off of uh, turn 15 was very strong, so he's able to uh, maintain the momentum as they run into turn one then for this, the start of the final lap of this level two last chance race. Lasse Sorensen from Luca Kita from Liam Duvall, and there is Alex Jung, who's currently running in uh, P4. He's being chased down by Andreas Jochemsen, who's running P5. Then it is Martin Stefanko and Hong Li Yi. So whichever way you look through this uh, pack of cars in the uh, level two last chance, uh, there is uh, plenty going on and uh, nothing is done, of course, until the checkered flag flies. But for Lasse Sorensen, I think he has probably done enough. And of course, he has a huge success reputation in the uh, World EX Championship and finds himself this time around in the last chance race. But he is leading the last chance race from Luca Kita and Liam Duvall. Andreas Jochemsen is taking the fight for P4 to Alex Jung. Alex Jung, you can see there defending, sticking his elbows out to try and prevent Andreas Jochemsen from coming through. Uh, back to the TK9 E-Speed driver of Lasse Sorensen then, who leads this from Luca Kita. And Kita has dropped back significantly now. He's probably taken as much as he possibly can out of that car as uh, Martin Stefanko and Andreas Jochemsen both get past Alex Jung. But Alex Jung is uh, fighting back, but he's fighting back from P6. So Alex Jung losing out and... Uh, Alex Jung running a bit wide there, and that will have unsettled the car a little bit and won't help his quest to try and retake those positions from Martin Stefanko and Andreas Jochemsen. In the meantime, Lasse Sorensen will round turn 15. Ahead of him, the start-finish line. Ahead of him, the checkered flag, and he's had to do it the hard way from the last chance, but winning level two, last chance it is, Lasse Sorensen. It's that man again. Lasse Sorensen at the top of the chart. Also through to level three from the last chance go Luca Kita, Liam Duvall and Martin Stefanko, the wildcard racer Alex Jung and also in speed racing's Hong Lee Yi. Now today's driver feature is about the Czechoslovakian 23-year-old Martin Stefanko. He finished third at Silverstone and then fourth at Spring. So let's find out more about the Williams eSports driver. Martin Stefanko is behind the wheel of the EX0 with the number 98. The young Czech is an established racer in the world of esports and is competing for the Williams Esports team in different racing series. So far, Stefanko has been competing in some of the biggest esports racing series, which include, among others, the Formula One Esports Series, DTM Esports Championship, V10R League, and Formula E Accelerate. At the end of 2019, he even went into retirement from eSports before returning to eSports competition only a few months later. I basically wanted to give myself one more year to try and prove myself. So even though I've been working long hours, even though I have a family, I still wanted to concentrate on, on sim racing as much as I could and uh, you know see where it ends up. In World EX, Stefanko has so far impressed with consistency. After finishing in third position of the first ever EX Prix at Silverstone, he just missed the podium during the next round at Sebring, where he finished in fourth place. So our main goals for the upcoming races in World EX will be to be as consistent as we can. We have been doing that quite well so far, but we also want to start uh, getting ourselves into the Superfinals and fighting for victories. This is Level 3. And for this quarterfinal on row one, we find Bruno Senna and Dries Vantor. To the second row of the grid, it's Philippe Deans and Gabby Chavez, who go from row two. And then on row three of the grid, Frank Bieler up against Lasse Sorensen. 
ahead of Alex Young and Hong Lee Yi on row four. Let's go racing then. This level three quarter final for our pro drivers. They all try and squeeze going into uh, turn number one. And uh, various lockups there. And off into the gravel goes uh, Gabby Chavez. And that's Dries Van Tor on the grass. And he's spun around. And the order is uh, Bruno Senna from uh, Philip Deans from Lasse Sorensen, who's up to P3. We're on board with Dries Van Tor, who's going to chase his way back and get on terms with the pack then that's being led by Bruno Senna. You can see the uh, lockups coming. And a round has gone. I think that was. Uh, Alex Young, who's uh, gone around. So the order, Senna, oh, Dean Sorensen, then it's Yi, the Vantor, and Gabby Chavez up to uh, P6 now with Frank Beeler having dropped down to P7, and Alex Young bringing up the rear of the pack now. So the WRT driver there, you can see, uh, trying to fight back is uh, Dries Vantor, but he's under pressure now from Gabby Chavez. Gabby Chavez is right on the tail of Dries Vantor here. So Dries Vantor, with all his experience, uh, we'll have to try and stick his elbows out and make that car as wide as possible. In the meantime, uh, Bruno Senna holds the lead of this uh, level three quarter final for our pro drivers uh, before even one lap has been completed. It's been full of action and uh, full of overtakes, uh, some of them as a consequence of cars going and uh, pointing in the wrong direction. Senna, Deans, Sorensen, Ye. And uh, there is uh, Dries Vantor in that P5 position, uh, still being chased down uh, by Gabby Chavez in uh, P6. And then it's Frank Beeler, P7, and Alex Jung, uh, P8. So let's put the first lap in the record books then as uh, Bruno Senna crosses the time in line. We get confirmation of the order. It is as we indicated, Senna, Deans, Sorensen, the top three drivers. And they've broken away significantly uh, from Hong Lee Yi, who is uh, running in uh, P4. On board with the Williams Esports driver of oh, Bruno Senna then, looking back at uh, Philip Deans, who's just trying to pressure. Uh, Bruno Senna into making an error somewhere so that he can stick his nose alongside that uh, Williams Esports car and uh, convert his P2 into P1. Uh, Bruno Senna wise to that though as Deans runs just a little bit wide onto the grass there but manages to hold onto the car. Uh, the awesome looking Gabby Chavez number 33 car running in P6 still chasing down Dries Van Tor. Uh, Dries getting a bit of a slide on there but holding on to the car and uh, not losing out on that position. Uh, Philippe Dean's under real pressure now from Lasse Sorensen. As Lasse Sorensen on the back of the Philip Dean's car. So Dean's is not able to make any impression on Bruno Senna because he's too busy defending from Lasse Sorensen, who's right alongside now. Lasse Sorensen could go through here. Oh, he's squeezed, and uh, Sorensen is holding on to this. This will be the overtake of the day if it happens, and it does. Lasse Sorensen. Uh, goes through to pick up that P2 place. Brilliant overtake from Lasse Sorensen. Bruno Senna still trying to escape up the road. Senna P1, Sorensen now P2, then it's Deans, then it's Yi, then it's Van Tor, Chavez, Bieler and Jung. That's the way it looks into turn number 15. One more time, they're going to have to go around this turn before the checkered flag is brought out on this uh, quarterfinal as we start lap three of three with Bruno Senna, Lasse Sorensen, and Deans is fighting back here on Lasse Sorensen as they go into turn number one, which all plays nicely into the hands of Bruno Senna, who can perhaps try and escape up the road. We're on board with Lasse Sorensen looking back now at the car of uh, Philippe Deans, and as you can see, two or three car lengths between Bruno Senna and Lasse Sorensen now. We're on the last lap of this uh, level three quarter final, and these three have broken away from the rest of the pack. Extraordinary pace they're showing, and great race action that they've delivered for us. And uh, Bruno Senna leading from Lasse Sorensen and uh, Philippe Deans. Yi is uh, running in uh, P4. Running in P5 is Dries Van Torp. Then it's Gabby Chavez, P6. Frank Beeler is P7. And uh, Alex Jung is P8. So can Bruno Senna take the checkered flag in this uh, level three quarter final? Or can Lasse Sorensen find something to wrestle away that lead from him in the final stages of this uh, level three quarter final? We are on the final lap. This is how hard Lasse Sorensen is working at trying to unsettle Bruno Senna ahead of him. Thus far, he's failed. Uh, Bruno has been able to metaphorically stick his elbows out and maintain that P1 position. But we are reaching the closing stages of this lap now. 
If the move is going to come, it's going to come soon from Lasse Sorensen. He's broken away from Philippe Deans. So it is a straight two-way fight now for the uh, win of this race between uh, Bruno Senna and Lasse Sorensen. Where will Sorensen try and pitch the car now? He's looking at the inside line. Now he dives to the outside. Bruno Senna carries a lot of speed, possibly too much speed as Lasse Sorensen is on the inside and goes through. It's a drag to the uh, timing line now, but Lasse Sorensen wins from Bruno Senna and Philippe Deans. Lasse Sorensen, huge congratulations. You had a real uh, battle on your hands there. Bruno Senna wasn't making it easy for you, but phenomenal move just on the last corner. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a close battle. Um, it's it's so hard to get really close on this track, so you know, only real opportunity you have to overtake is into the last corner. So, um, yeah, he braked a bit too late, and then uh, I got the chance to go on the inside. Uh, but yeah, it was, was a nice race. And now, it's the eSports quarterfinal. Mickey Hoyer and Risto Capit are on row one of the grid. On row two, it's Alan Terzik and Thomas Schmidt. And then on the third row of the grid, we find Fabrice Cornelis and Luca Kita, with Liam Duvall and Martin Stefanko on row four. And we are away and racing. Good start from Mickey Hoyer then. He now dives to the outside to try and get a slingshot going into turn number one and carry as much speed as possible as the rest of the cars jostle all behind him. Is there contact? Yes, yeah, sure enough there is, but all the cars remain on the tarmac through turn number one and into turn number two. It's uh, Mickey Hoyer from Risto Capit and Alan Terzik. Liam Duvall, though, dives to the inside and he moves up into P2. Great overtake from Liam Duvall ahead of Risto Capit, who's P3 now. So Hoyer, Duvall, Capit. Uh, then it is Schmidt. Cornelis, Gita, Stefanko, and Alain Terzik. Three lap quarter final then for our uh, esports racers. And Mickey Hoyer really stretching the lead. And we go on board with the absolute racing driver now. As you can see, he's got four or five car lengths over Liam Duvall, who is running in that P2 position at the moment. And we go on board with uh, Liam Duvall now, uh, chasing down or trying to chase down Mickey Hoyer. But Hoyer's got great pace in his EX0 car, that's for sure. All the uh, steering lock is piled on there from Liam Duvall to make his way around that turn. This is our race leader, Mickey Hoyer, from Liam Duvall, P2, and then Risto Capit uh, is about to be chased by uh, Schmidt, who's running in uh, P4. So Mickey Hoyer trying to build that comfort margin between himself and Liam Duvall in that uh, P1 position, but they're all bunching up really rather nicely here, just what we like. A brilliant racing in this World EX Championship. Uh, we are at uh, the Sepang circuit and running down behind the start finish straight now, heading into the final turn on this 15-turn uh, circuit. And the turns are pretty challenging. Uh, five of them left-handers, 10 of them are right-handers. And here comes Mickey Hoyer to put the first lap through. And he has led all the way through that uh, 5.543 kilometer lap into turn one. You run really, really downhill into uh, turn two, which is almost a hairpin. You come back upon yourself and the driver's all doing very well here. Fabrice Cornelis looking very lively on Schmidt as well in that uh, P4, P5 battle that uh, is continuing. And all of this is playing nicely into the hands of Mickey Hoyer, who's just escaping up the road in the lead of the race. So Hoyer from Duvall, Capit, Schmidt, Cornelis, Kita, Stefanko, and Terzik. So there you can see uh, four cars all together there, all battling over that uh, P2, 3, 4, and 5 positions. Because Mickey Hoyer is very nearly up the road sufficiently to be able to uh, pour himself a cup of coffee. However, that can all change in a breath. On board with the uh, WRT car looking back. And some great onboard shots here. And this, the uh, back end of that WRT car uh, that we mentioned just a few moments ago. We're on board the uh, number 11 car of Luca Kita. And Luca Kita currently running in that uh, P6 position. Fabrice Cornelis in uh, P5. So uh, one place ahead of him. Uh, Fabrice Cornelis, of course. Oh, and that is Fabrice Cornelis, who's run really, really wide. That's going to drop him way down the order. I was just about to extol the virtues of the uh, eSports WRT driver who has dropped right the way down to P7 now, uh, just ahead of Alain Terzi. So another lap, the second lap, uh, as we start the final one then, 
Uh, with Mickey Hoyer in the lead from Liam Duvall and Risto Capit, and uh, then it is Schmidt who's running P4, Luca Kita ahead of Martin Stefanko, and uh, Fabrice Cornelis then uh, following that uh, excursion onto the runoff area that finds himself in uh, P7. So that was uh, very, very unfortunate for uh, Fabrice Cornelis, Alan Terzic. Uh, who we are on board with now with a uh, problem with the car, I would guess, now because he's running considerably slower than anybody else. So Alan Terzic trying to nurse the car around the, uh, around the lap. Uh, Mickey Hoyer, in the meantime, continues to maintain his uh, P1 position ahead of Liam Duvall and uh, Risto Capit. And uh, Mickey Hoyer really has been untroubled in this uh, level three quarter final in this uh, third round of the World EX Championship. Oh, just kicking up a bit of dust there as Liam Duvall. It's his final opportunity now for Liam Duvall to try and get on terms and uh, running out of uh, opportunity to do so. We're on board with the absolute racing driver who is leading the race, Mickey Hoyer. Looking back at Liam Duvall and also Risto Capit, P2 and P3, ahead of Schmidt, who is uh, P4. And uh, final parts of this lap then at the Sepang Circuit, the World EX Championship here in Malaysia. And uh, this will be great victory for uh, Absolute Racing with uh, Mickey Hoyer at the wheel of that car. But it's not all over until the chequered flag has flown. So one corner to do for Mickey Hoyer. And on board here as we look at the cars now into the final turn. Turn number 15, Mickey Hoyer surely has done enough uh, to seal victory over Liam Duvall. He heads towards the chequered flag. Sure enough, the chequered flag flies. And Mickey Hoyer victorious in that level three quarterfinal for eSports drivers. Fantastic race. Uh, that means you've secured your place in the level four race. How was it for you? Uh, it's just great. Like, you know, starting from pole position, you want nothing else but defense uh, P1 to turn one and uh, leave turn two, still being first, and then you see the guys battling behind, taking time away from each other, just a little bit eases off the pressure, which is uh, helping a little bit. And then, of course, you know, just try and take it home to the line and, yeah, secure the best possible spot for, for the semifinals. Excellent. Well, congratulations, and we'll let you gather your thoughts ahead of the semi-finals. See you later. The results of the Level 3 quarter-finals for pro drivers Lasse Sorensen, Bruno Senna, Philippe Deans, Hong Li Yi, Dries Van Zor and Gabby Chavez are all going through to Level 4. And for the eSports drivers, it's Martin Stefanko, Luca Kita, Thomas Schmidt, Risto Capit, Liam Duvall and Mickey Hoyer, who drives for this team, Absolute Racing. Absolute Racing is no stranger to competition in real-world motorsport. The Chinese team has captured victories and podiums in racing series like the Asian Le Mans Series, Audi R8 LMS Cup, the F3 Asian Championship, Porsche Carrera Cup Asia, and many more. Founded in 2010 by Ingo Mata and Fabien Fior, Absolute Racing has become a powerhouse in the Asian racing scene. With the team always striving for new challenges, Absolute Racing entered the World EX Championship to start their first ever year of competition in the virtual world of motorsport. With its mission of combining entertaining motorsport and its core message of sustainability and raising climate awareness, World EX was the perfect fit for Absolute Racing to enter the new challenge. When we saw World X coming around, it has a very good feel for us because it's something completely new. It takes not just a normal motorsport approach going into real racing. It's like with the heats and with the professional drivers and with sim racers, which are actually very high professional. It was a good thing for us to take part in that. As the only Asian entrant in the World EX Championship, Absolute Racing is aiming for good results at Sepang. It continues with level four, the semi-final. And on row one of the grid, Lasse Sorensen up against Bruno Senna. Row two, we find Philippe Danes and Hong Li Yi. On row three of the grid for this semi-final, Dries Van Tor and Gabby Chavez. A great start from Lasse Sorensen, less of a good start from Bruno Senna, who appears to bog down. The man on the move here is potentially Gabby Chavez. Look at this, diving through. The pack as he heads right alongside Lasse Sorensen now, but carries too much speed into turn number one. So Lasse Sorensen is able to maintain the lead, but Gabby Chavez in a three abreast fight going through turn number two. 
Philip Deans it is that uh, settles into P2, but being chased by Gabby Chavez, who's on the grass, and then makes contact with Hong Li Yi, uh, spinning Hong Li Yi into the wall. So both Gabby Chavez, who we're on board with here, and Hong Li Yi in absolute strife right at the start of this race, and it's all playing into the hands nicely of Lasse Sorensen, who is leading the race. Here he is, we pick up the leader, Lasse Sorensen, uh, from Philippe Deans, and then Bruno Senna in that P3 position ahead of Dries Van Tour, then the recovering Hong Li Yi and Gabby Chavez. So, where and what can uh, Philippe Deans do to get on terms with Lasse Sorensen? The TK9 e-speed driver who has been so dominant in the RCCO World EX Championship. This is uh, Gabby Chavez uh, trying to come back and uh, catch up with the pack from uh, P last at the moment following that uh, off that he had on the grass, unsettled the car, making contact with uh, Hong Li Yi, uh, which sent Hong Li Yi into the uh, barriers. And Gabby Chavez uh, on a mission to try and get back to the pack, although uh, significant damage, I suspect, to the car, which means it's just not handling correctly. So uh, Gabby Chavez in all sorts of strife, and unfortunately, uh, it's effectively his race done and dusted, I would suggest. In the meantime, Lasse Sorensen continuing to lead Philippe Deans, but Deans is getting a little bit closer as we put the uh, first lap in. And uh, the cars head downhill into turn one for the second lap of this semi-final level four. And look at this, Philippe Deans really beginning to get into the uh, rearview mirrors of Lasse Sorensen and try and worry him. So pro drivers in this semi-final, and here comes uh, Deans now. Closer, closer, closer to Lasse Sorensen, dives to the inside as Sorensen makes a very rare error and goes off onto the grass, which means he loses P1 and uh, P2. So Lasse Sorensen now also losing out on uh, P3 to Dries Vantor. So it's now Dean Senna, Vantor Sorensen. So one bad move from Sorensen has cost him three places effectively. And our new race leader is uh, Philip Deans from uh, Bruno Senna and uh, Dries Vantor. There you can see Dries Vantor in the uh, WRT eSports colors and uh, chasing hard now Lasse Sorensen. This isn't all over yet. And you bet your bottom dollar that Lasse Sorensen will do all he can to uh, uh, try and get past those cars in front of him. So for the moment, Deans absolutely having the time of his life. Look at the gap that he's built over Bruno Senna. The big fight going on is for P2 because Senna is under pressure now from Dries Van Tor. We look back from the Bruno Senna Williams eSports car to Dries Van Tor, who's doing the chasing. Down the back straight, heading into the uh, final turn, which is where we are now. We pick up the race leader, Philip Deans. Something like 10 car lengths of advantage at the moment. And then it's uh, Van Tor and Senna arguing over that P2 place. And of course, that plays into the hands of Lasse Sorensen. And Lasse probably will allow those two to fight ahead of him and then he will be ready to uh, pounce like a viper and pick up the pieces. So Dries Van Tor on the inside of uh, Bruno Senna, but that uh, is a long way around turn two, but he may have made this work. And as I predicted, Lasse Sorensen really getting into that battle as well. Big, big winner out of that momentarily was Dries Van Tor, who put himself alongside Bruno Senna and was up into P2 for a moment. We're on board now with uh, Dries Van Tor, still chasing down Bruno Senna. And as I mentioned, this is all just great news for Philip Deans because he hasn't got to worry about cars behind him because whilst these two are fighting amongst themselves, he can just focus and concentrate on getting up the road. Dries Van Tor, of course, has also got the uh, knowledge of Lasse Sorensen. He's right behind him. It's Lasse Sorensen that we're on board with now as he chases down Dries Van Tor. The three of them then, a three-way fight for P2. Senna, Van Tor, Sorensen, Hong Li Yi and Gabby Chavez are out of the running to be truthful. And of course, it's a great advantage to Philip Deans who's just able to uh, focus on every apex and trying to keep the car uh, between the white lines and keep it on the tarmac. That's all he's got to worry about. And you can see the... Uh, EX0 car of uh, Philippe Deans leading this and Bruno Senna doing everything he can to defend that uh, P2 position, which is where he's at at the moment. However, the ever-present danger of Dries Van Tort and Lasse Sorensen, uh, who would certainly like to wrestle that P2 position away from Bruno Senna. Around turn 15 goes uh, Philippe Deans then. Final effort from Dries Van Tort to try and unsettle Bruno Senna, but I think it's as we were. Philippe Deans wins from Bruno Senna and Dries Van Tort.
Lasse Sorensen, unbelievable. What a tough race for you. You had such a clean start, but then what happened in the halfway through that race? Uh, somehow the brake marker was uh, removed, so I couldn't really see it uh, because of the graphics in game. So uh, I thought it was the 150 mark, but it was 100 mark, so I just braked too late. That's how it is. Here comes the grid for semi final two. Mickey Hoyer and Liam Tafall are on row one of the grid. Row two features Risto Capit and Thomas Schmidt. And on row three of the grid for this semi-final, Luca Kita and Martin Stefanko. Well, best of luck, everyone. Enjoy. Yeah, um, luck. Nothing to lose, boys. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of nice, friendly banter at the start of this as uh, onto the grass goes uh, Thomas Schmidt, who's in strife. And he's now in the barriers and pointing in the wrong direction as Mickey Hoyer gets a great start. Risto cap it too. As they head around to turn number one, run downhill into uh, turn two. So uh, Thomas Schmidt then, actually he was trying to avoid a car ahead of him and uh, found himself sort of squeezed onto the grass the Nianco Esports driver. And now he's got to do an awful lot of catching up from the uh, P6 position he is in now. Mickey Hoyer leading from Risto Capit and Martin Stefanko is P3 with Liam Duvall P4, Luca Kita P5 and then as we have just seen the probably damaged uh, Thomas Schmidt car following uh, his excursion into the barriers on the start finish straight right at the start of the race. On board with Risto Capit chasing down Mickey Hoyer. Risto Capit currently in that P2 position. Uh, Mickey Hoyer is uh, leading. And of course, Capit has also got Martin Stefanko leaning on him as well. So we've got to be ever minded of that. Go back on board with the uh, number 10 driver then, driving for RHG Esports. And at the moment, he's not able to uh, get ever closer to uh, Mickey Hoyer. So we will see. Uh, it's only the opening lap of three, this uh, level four semi-final. As uh, the RCCO World EX Championship makes its first visit here to the Sepang circuit for the Malaysian EX Pre. Thomas Schmidt then, who is just heading in towards turn 14. Now there, you could just see him at the back of that shot. So before the end of this semi-final, he could be onto the back of uh, Luca Kita, uh, dependent upon what damage he has to his uh, EX Zero car. Mickey Hoyer, uh, Risto Capit and Martin Stefanko then P1, 2 and 3 as they cross the timing line and start lap two. And Mickey Hoyer, if anything, is increasing his margin uh, between himself and uh, Risto Capit. Capit under a little bit of pressure from Stefanko, but Stefanko in turn is under pressure from Duvall for that P3 place. So, and of course, as we have seen in previous races here, once you can get your nose in front, as indeed Mickey Hoyer has done, all you've got to worry about and focus on is your lap. You haven't got to be uh, conscious of the battles that are going on behind. If anything, they are playing into your hands nicely, and that's what we've seen with uh, Mickey Hoyer. Risto Cabot has always been there or thereabouts, but uh, he's never really been able to reduce that gap between uh, Mickey Hoyer and himself, and that remains the case on this second lap as well. It's Hoyer from Cabot, from uh, Stefanko, and then Liam Duvall. Uh, with Luca Kita P5 and uh, Thomas Schmidt running in P6. Luca Kita then ahead of Liam DePaul and uh, has picked up that uh, P4 play. So uh, Luca Kita driving for the uh, Bieler Racing Team uh, Euronics. Student and uh, was a German kart slalom champion back in uh, 2015. And spends a lot of his social time walking, does uh, Luca Kita. So on board the uh, number 10 car driven by Risto Capit for R8G Esports in that P2 place. Uh, Mickey Hoyer, as we look back from his absolute racing car to this driver, uh, Risto Capit, down the back straight here in uh, Sepang, rounding this uh, turn 15. Fantastic vantage point uh, for that particular camera. And uh, heading towards the timing line, and we start the final lap of this uh, semi final, which Mickey Hoyer has led from the off. Uh, from Risto Capit, uh, Martin Stefanko and Luca Keita ahead of Liam Duvall. And uh, you can see there as the cars ran into turn one that uh, Schmidt has not quite made it onto the back of this pack as I predicted that perhaps he would uh, for the last lap. So Mickey Hoyer Capit and Martin Stefanko. Now Luca Keita fancying his chances of uh, P3 here potentially. Of course, uh, the Martin Stefanko car is preventing him from achieving that accolade at the moment. Can he get past Martin Stefanko before the conclusion of this lap? Well, he's nothing like close enough in my opinion, to be able to do so at the moment. On board again with Risto Capit. 
now or never chasing down uh, Mickey Hoyer. He's got to find some pace from somewhere that he's not shown on the previous two laps, honestly. And uh, therefore, unless a mistake comes or some technical issue for Mickey Hoyer, then he should have this sealed, I would have suggested. Or oh, on board then with the uh, Martin Stefanko car. As he now is preventing Capit getting on terms with Mickey Hoyer because Capit is having to defend. So it's a two way fight for P2 at the moment between Risto Capit and Martin Stefanko. That great news for this man, Mickey Hoyer, because he's able to increase his margin of lead in that P1 place. And, uh, Martin Stefanko doing all he can, but he's running out of uh, opportunities now because we are on to the uh, back straight. One turn to do. So Stefanko to the outside. It's a long way around the outside here. Uh, Risto Capic got the faster inside line. He's able to close the door. So it is going to be Mickey Hoyer that takes the win from Risto Capit and Martin Stefanko. P4 for Luca Kita, P5 for Liam Duvall. And of course, Schmidt finishes in P6. I couldn't believe it that Martin is not catching up and then he started catching up. <laughs> <laughs> And the results of level four, the semi-finals for the pro drivers, Philippe Deans, Bruno Senna, Dries Vantor, all through to level five. Lasse Sorensen isn't, nor Hong Li Yi and Gabby Chavez. And for the eSports drivers, Mickey Hoyer, P1, Risto Cabot, P2, Martin Stefanko, P3, and therefore Luca Kita, Liam Duvall, and Thomas Schmidt are not going through. Whilst our finalists prepare for the next level, it's time to take a look at some of the brilliant sustainability-led initiatives that are taking place all around the world as increasing numbers of individuals and organisations join that fight against climate change. Google is working on two new projects related to the climate crisis. For Google Maps, the tech giant is building a new eco-friendly routing model that optimises for lower fuel consumption based on factors like road incline and traffic congestion. Users will be able to choose between the fastest route and the route with the lowest carbon footprint. In the biggest update to Google Earth since 2017, a new time-lapse function will allow users to witness nearly four decades of planetary change. 24 million satellite photos from the past 37 years have been compiled in this eye-opening experience. German startup Lilium is making progress with its electric vertical takeoff and landing jet. The first zero-emission seven-seater Lilium jet, with a maximum range of over 250 kilometers and a cruise speed of 280 kilometers per hour, is expected to come off the production line next year. The airports in Munich and Nuremberg will become hubs for a proposed regional air mobility network in Bavaria. This news follows on from Lilium's planned hubs in North Rhine-Westphalia and Florida, with the first passenger flights projected to take place from 2024 onwards. Audi intends to have a carbon-neutral footprint across the entire life cycle of its models by 2050, while all of the Audi facilities are intended to operate with a carbon-neutral footprint by 2025. The brand with the four rings also proves that a motorsport operation can have a reduced environmental impact. The FIA has awarded the three-star environmental accreditation to the Audi Sport home base in Neuburg, Germany. The FIA has announced the creation of all new technical regulations for electric-powered GT cars, featuring several technical innovations, including fast charging. The cars built to this set of technical regulations will compete at full-length permanent circuits. The FIA targets a similar performance window to the current generation of GT3 cars, while they should exceed them in areas such as acceleration and qualifying pace. The Audi Q4 e-tron and the Audi E6 e-tron concept have all the ingredients to become successful electric cars. But our pick of the month is definitely the new Mercedes EQS. Mercedes claims a range of up to 770 kilometers for their first all-electric luxury car. One reason is a new world record. The EQS has a drag coefficient of just 0.20, the lowest for a road car. Let's move on to level five, the final. And here comes the grid in full. For BS Plus competition, it's Philippe Deans. Alongside is Mickey Hoyer for Absolute Racing. On the second row of the grid, we find for Williams Esports, Bruno Senna. And for RAG Esports, it's Risto Capit. 
Then, on the third row of the grid, it's Dries Van Tor for WRT, and for Williams Esports, it's Martin Stefanko. Let's do this thing. Good luck, gentlemen. Good luck. Good luck. Great camaraderie right at the start of the race. Good start from Philippe Deans. Good start, too, from Bruno Senna. Mickey Hoyer seemed to get bogged down, so... Bruno Senna up into P2. Does he get launched by Dries Van Tor? No, I don't think so. But Senna on the inside now. And uh, he makes contact uh, with our race leader, Philip Deans, who manages to hold onto that car, thankfully. So it is Deans and Hoyer from Capit Van Tor, Stefanko and Bruno Senna now right at the back of the pack. And he has got a lot of time to make up to try and get on terms with the rest of the drivers in this Level 5 final three laps of the uh, Sepang Malaysia circuit. Uh, Philip Deans under no pressure at the moment from Mickey Hoyer. So Philip Deans just sliding the car through that uh, right-hander. And uh, there we can see on board as we look back at the Mickey Hoyer car. Almost a double apex turn that one. Mickey Hoyer getting a slide on as well, controlling it nicely though. And we go on board now as he chases down the race leader. And uh, this could be for uh, P1. Mickey Hoyer now just beginning to get right into the uh, mix with uh, Philippe Deans. It's Deans, it's Hoyer, it's Cabot, it's Van Tour, it's Stefanko and uh, Bruno sent us some way down in that P6 place at the moment. So we stay on board with Mickey Hoyer then as he tries just to uh, get a little bit closer to Philippe Deans. But at the moment, Philippe has got this all completely under control and uh, is showing very good pace indeed. And uh, Mickey Hoyer throwing absolutely everything at it. Dries Van Tor is under a little bit of pressure now from Martin Stefanko for that P4 position also. So on board now with uh, Mickey Hoyer, I think we were, as he was chasing down the uh, P1 driver, Philip Deans, who's about to put the first lap in the book. So first lap completed then as we cross the timing line. Now Deans from Hoyer, from Capit, from Van Tor, from Stefanko, from uh, Bruno Senna. Running downhill now into turn number one and... Uh, just on board there with Risto Capit as Risto Capit tries to chase Mickey Hoyer. Now, Mickey Hoyer is in this really difficult position where he's trying to overtake Philip Deans ahead, but he's also got to defend from the very lively Risto Capit at the moment. So he is in that uh, awful position of hunting but being hunted at the same time. Still a lot can happen, but for the moment, Philip Deans, you have to say, is driving an absolutely perfect line around this uh, Malaysian circuit here in Sepang. Doing a good job indeed and uh, seeing off the challenges from Mickey Hoyer and Risto Capit and also Dries Van Tour and Martin Stefanko and Bruno Senna. Good on board shot then of the number 99 car for absolute racing. It's Mickey Hoyer who is in that uh, P2 position. Love the sound of these uh, EX0 cars, which of course have extraordinary performance. 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in just 2.3 seconds. Uh, 0 to 200 is only 4.6 seconds. Uh, breathtaking performance, uh, but of course you have to control that performance, which is what Risto Capit is doing from RAG Esports at the moment in that P3 place. So looking back from Mickey Hoyer's absolute racing car then at uh, Risto Capit, who's doing the chasing there as uh, Mickey takes to the uh, gravel just to try and get a little bit more forward momentum as he uh, quest, in his quest rather, to try and keep on terms with uh, Philippe Deans, who's doing a fine job here. And uh, heading into the uh, final turn, this uh, left-hander. And there, as we pick the cars up, you can see the gap between himself and Mickey Hoyer has actually increased a bit now. So Hoyer, of course, is ever conscious of the fact he's got Risto Capit up his trumpet and therefore is having to defend from Risto Capit. And Risto is getting closer, 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 going in towards uh, turn number one to the uh, P2 driver, Mickey Hoyer, and just shows his face to the inside line. Could we have a challenge on P2 here? It'll play nicely into the hands of Philippe Deans, who'll be able to escape still further up the road. So Risto Capit it is that we are on board with now as we run downhill. And uh, this is our race leader, Philippe Deans, looking back at Mickey Hoyer and Risto Capit as they contest that uh, P2 position again. Hoyer just looking a little bit out of sorts there, picked up a little bit of the grass and kicked up some dust. Uh, bear in mind... Uh, the uh, partly cloudy conditions here at the uh, Sepang circuit, seemingly absolutely to the liking of Philip Deans. So, uh, Mickey Hoyer, that double apex turn, holding onto that car really quite nicely and uh, defending from Risto Capit. And all the time he's defending from Risto Capit, he's not able to get on terms with our race leader, Philip Deans. Uh, P1 for Deans, P2 for Hoyer, P3 for Risto Capit at the moment with Dries Van Tor in that P4 position. 
So accelerate, 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 and then break hard into the turn. Philippe Dean's just got the measure of this car absolutely set up perfectly. Uh, the BS Plus competition driver then in P1 from Mickey Hoyer, from Risto Capet, from Dries Van Tor, Martin Stefanko. And still can't quite see Bruno Senna on the back of the pack yet in that uh, P6 position. So level five, the final then, and the final turn. Turn number 15 for Philippe Deans, who surely has done enough and will run towards the timing line now to take victory in this final. Philippe Deans wins from Mickey Hoyer, and Risto Capit takes P3. Good job, guys. Good job, yeah. Philip, congratulations. You've secured your first time. It's the spot into the super final. Well done. Yeah, thank you. A little bit of redemption from the last week and um, got caught up in an incident in the uh, quarterfinal or the semifinal last time. And, um, you know, starting to get to grips with the uh, art factor and feeling a little bit more comfortable. And um, I'm looking forward to uh, representing this competition in the uh, super final. Miki, congratulations into the super final. What do you rate your chances against Philippe? It's going to be extremely tough to, to make it to the top spot. But I'm looking forward to it actually making it to the super final as a mega result. Proud of the guys of Absolute Racing. Uh, happy and proud to race for them and keep their flag high. Absolutely. I'm sure the team is fully supporting you. Uh, good luck for that super final. Well, there we have it. We have Philippe for BS Plus competition and Mickey Hoyer for absolute racing going through to the super final. We have a pro racing driver going up against an esports driver. Let's find out who's going to take the crown today. The Malaysian EX Prix. The final duel is between Philippe Deans and Mickey Hoyer. So the USA resident will take on the Germany sports star who will be victorious in the one lap shootout super final. Stand by. Best of luck to you. Uh, you too, man. Y you could sleep on the start now. I'd appreciate that. Okay, got it. This is it, the super final, a brilliant start from Philippe Deans then heading into turn number one, but Mickey Hoyer is with him all the way. Just taking a sneaky look at the inside, a little bit of a lock up from Philippe Deans, but he holds onto it round turn number one pretty nicely. Turn number one soon becomes turn number two. And uh, Mickey Hoyer and Philippe Deans, that split shot showing just how they're concentrating on this. It's all or nothing in this uh, super final, the one lap shootout, and Philippe Deans showing uh, Mickey Hoyer the way around this Sepang circuit for the moment. But Mickey Hoyer is a hugely successful esports racer up against Philippe Deans, the pro racer. Pro versus esports in this super final, the World EX Championship from Sepang. And uh, Philippe Deans with a couple of car lengths over Mickey Hoyer too. And just enable a breath or two, perhaps, as Mickey Hoyer continues to chase with beginning to get to the end of this five and a half kilometer lap and Mickey Hoyer carrying a lot of speed into this turn and he's able to uh, bring the car to a slow and make the turn perfectly comfortably but Philippe Deans has still got a couple of car lengths over Mickey Hoyer. Hoyer trying everything he can. He's not able quite to put the pressure on uh, Philippe Deans. He's not quite close enough to try and provoke a mistake but he's carrying a lot of speed here around this right hand up. And as they exit the right-hander, both of them run onto the grass. Whoa, that was close. Credit to both of you for being able to control that into the final turn now, though this super final is still on. It's not won yet. But as they head towards the timing line, surely Philip has done enough to take victory. The pro racer wins over the esports racer in this super final. Philippe, congratulations. You are today's overall winner. Um, but Mickey didn't make it easy for you. That was a really tough race. Yeah, I mean, Mickey is a really good driver. I've, I've known about him and about our, or his uh, his talent in our factor for quite some time now. So uh, really happy to, to get the edge on him and, and take the win here. Well, well done to you and the team, BS Plus competition, of course. And Mickey, let's have a quick word. Um, that was a tough one for you, wasn't it? I know it was tricky because you were starting on the left-hand side of the grid uh, and it just didn't come back to you. Yeah, I mean, kudos to him. He's done a phenomenal event for the fact that um, he has not the biggest experience with our factor too. So absolutely congrats 
astonishing uh, performance there. And so it's just great to see the guys up there battle it out um, on, on yeah similar levels. Just great to see. Well, it's great to see the both of you battling it out together in the super final. So thanks very much, and we look forward to seeing you in the next round. OK, so now it's time to go over to our commentator, Dave Richardson, to find out the final driver and team standings. And the final results of our Malaysian EX Prix. Philip Dean's the winner for BS Plus competition. Mickey Hoyer P2, Risto Capit P3, both eSports drivers. Creditable P10 for Hong Lee Yi. And we should mention the rest of our localist drivers that took part, including Alex Jung, Zifi Li, and Yifi Yi, who finished P16, P17, and P18, respectively. A big well done to all the competitors that took part in the Malaysian EX Prix. OK, then, Phil, so this is the chance for you to take home a rather special prize. Um, <laughs> but you need a bit of luck on your side uh, <laughs> for this to happen. Um, I'll just explain what um, the procedure is. Basically, I've got two envelopes in my hand. One of them says driver and one of them says fan. So if you pick the envelope that says driver, then you're in with a chance to win today's big prize, and that is an incredible limited edition book about the 125 years of the history of Ab, signed by Hans Jürgen Abt himself. Um, an incredible, beautiful book, but you have to answer the three questions correctly. Um, if, however, it says fan, then the fan with the biggest donation on fundraiser will get to take that amazing prize home. So, Phil, do you understand the rules? Yeah, I got it. I might have used up all my luck already, but uh, let's find out. Let's find out indeed. There must be a little bit left, maybe. OK, so my first question is, is it the envelope on my left or my right that you would like to choose? On the right. On the right. Dun, 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 dun. Ooh! We've never actually had a driver get this right before. It's always only gone to a fan. So that's exciting. OK, right. Now on to the questions. I hope you've been listening, because the first question, Phil, is how many nations are represented by drivers in this round? There are three options. Is it five, ten or twelve? Let's go with um, 10. And at that point, Phil, your luck has run out. <laughs> I'm really sorry. <laughs> the answer is, in fact, an amazing 12. 12 different nationalities represented in this championship. Oh, I know. Uh, so on that note, I go, <clears throat> but it doesn't take away the win from today. You still get the points for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but unfortunately, you don't get to take home the amazing book. Uh, but the good news is it will then go to a uh, fan. Right. Um, so it's the fan with the highest donation on Fundraiser. Uh, more information of this is available on fundraiser.com and the winner will be picked in within a week. Well, Phil, thank you so much for joining us and uh, we'll see you very soon. Well, thank you. Well, that is it for today. Another great round of World EX. Do be sure to join us next time because our drivers are going to be tackling the Maastricht City Street Circuit in the Netherlands. Love that track. And in the meantime, don't forget to tune in to the After Race Talk Show. It's on Twitch right after the show. And use the hashtag Racing for the Climate. Get involved in the conversation in the meantime. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you soon.